all right hello and welcome to my next video so in this video we're gonna try to set up more bus communication with PLC simulation software so if you don't have real hardware you can use this simulation software to emulate the hardware PLC so I already made this project so you can download it from the link below the video so I just open up the main OB1 and here's the all the magic happens so I got some logic for the reading for the writing and the main block for the Modbus communication is this one MB client you can find it in the communication tab and I believe it's here yeah, others Modbus TCP and client client means uh, the PLC is controlling the communication so basically other device is just waiting for connection yeah waiting for connection so there are a few important bits in this in this function block so we got request so as soon as you trigger request it will trigger the function block disconnect you can manually disconnect from the from the modbus slave mb mode the mb mode defines if you're gonna send, receive, and what you're gonna send, or what you're gonna receive. So if you open up the uh, the help file from the from the block, you can see MB mode, and here you can see the modes. So we're gonna use reading holding registers, which is 103, and writing holding registers which is 116 as you can see here then we got address so this is like offset where you're gonna write I set it from here so you writing to the zero register and how many data we're gonna write so right now we're writing five so we will write five registers starting from zero so if we open up the modbus slave, it goes like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we got data buffer. So if I'm reading, as soon as the reading is done, I will move this data buffer to the receive DB. If I'm writing, then I will move send data to the data buffer and then I will send it through the modbus. Alright, the connect. This is a definition of connection. So this definition is in DB2, Modbus config DB. So we got here we got all the bools we talked about before and we got the connect. So this is data type TCON IPv4. All this information you can find in help file. So if we open this up, we can see. So there's interface ID. This ID is specified in a hardware configuration. So if we go to the device configuration. Alright, so we can find this information in here. So in here, so if you click on a port, you go system constants. Here you can see Profinet interface and the number 64. So if we go back, boom, 64. Alright, ID have to be just some unique number. So if you got multiple Modbus clients, this number have to be unique. But we're using just uh, one function, so just punch any number. Connection type 11, so 11 goes for TCP/IP. Active, it means uh, the PLC is active, so it's controlling the communication. Then we got remote address. So this is basically address of the of the computer where you're running the simulation software. So if we open up the network connection, here you can see uh, the Siemens PLC SIM Ethernet adapter. So if we open this up, here you can find the IP address. So 192.168.0.241. So we punch in this number, this address and then just the ports so for modbus it's generally port 502 and we have to set the same port 
for the simulation software. So I'm using the Modbus slave, so it's pretty good for the simulation. You can download it. Uh, I will share the link below the video. Yeah, and we got the port 502. So that's the uh, connect definition for the Modbus client. Then there is one more important settings. So if we create this MB client in the system blocks, it will automatically create uh, this function block DB, this MB client. So you can see it's DB4, DB4. So if you open this up, you have to set the MB unit ID. So this is the unit ID of the other device. So if we open the slave, here you can see it's 255. So it's FF. This can be any number, so basically you have to check your data sheet and find the correct number. Sometimes it's 1, sometimes it's FF, which means 255. So it depends on the device. Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so now we can start the PLC sim. So if you need to simulate these communication functions, you need a PLC sim advance. It doesn't work with the normal PLC sim. So you can download it, the trial version, trial version and I will share the link below the video. So in a PLC sim advance, just select the PLC sim virtual Ethernet adapter because we're gonna simulate the Ethernet connection. So you need this this selection, just punch in some name of the PLC and click on star. This will start the virtual PLC. The IP address is gonna be the same as it defined in a hardware configuration. So again, if we go to device configuration, general Ethernet, here you can see the IP address. Alright, so now we can download the project. Here we go. If it asks, if it asks you which interface you want to use, so select this Siemens PLC Sim Virtual Ethernet Adapter. So now, if we go online and check the Modbus function block, here we can see the status of the communication. So the correct status uh, is 7004. It means it's ready for it's ready for transfer. So right now something is not running. So if we check the Modbus slave, there we go. We click listen, and we should see incoming connection in a second. All right, accepted connection, and here we go. Status is 7004. So it's ready for the transfer. Okay, so I create a watch table so we can watch the DBs. So if I open it up, go online, fill it with some data, so we just write some numbers. Click apply, and now we should be able to read those values with the Modbus client function. So if we forward the read, to the one. There we go. So in the DB receive, we got those numbers. Now, if we force write, I will write those numbers in a register. So if I force it to one. And check the Modbus life. Here we go. We got those numbers, and here you can see the actual packets. So you can decode uh, this message to see what does it mean. So if you find some, it's called Modbus parser, I believe. You can decode this message and see the the transfer, the code, the registers, number of registers, how many you transferring, and so on. All right, so this is working program, but a lot of times it doesn't work. So we try to simulate some issues with the communication. So a lot of times 
people put wrong IP address in a connection in a connection definition. So if we open up the config db connect and we put the wrong IP address. So let's say we change the third number to one. So now this is incorrect IP address. If we go to Modbus function online and try to I don't know, write so let's first disconnect it and connect it disconnect connect and here you can see you're getting status ADA4 so it means if we open up the status data sheet status ADA4 what was it it was ADA4 yeah. so it's not in here but you can see it's not in a status 7004 so there's some issues so we can fix it up again and remember if you change just the starting value this is the initial value so you need to change the online value you need to change both so we change it back to zero so now we got the correct IP address if you check the function block here we go 7004 another common issue is the mod modbus ID so again, if we go to client DB and this MB unit ID is incorrect, so right now it's correct. So if we change it to one, so now this number is incorrect. And we try to write data. Here you can see. So we duck we got a correct status but it's busy the block is busy it's not actually sending the data so right now it's in 7006 check the status 7006 data is being received but it's not actually communicating since the MB unit ID is incorrect if we try to disconnect connect Again, he's trying, but it's not working. So we're not actually getting any error, but the sending or receiving is not working. So again, if we fix it up, so this MB unit ID is this slave ID. So you can see, we're getting the uh, the packets. We're getting the request for the write. But since the slave ID is incorrect, it doesn't work. It's not working. So if we change it back to FF, which is 255, go back. Here we go, 7004. And you see, uh, the request was correct. And we get a transfer. Alright, so that's basically it. So I will share all the project data in the uh, link below the video and you can test it out you can probably test it even with the Arduino so if you plug the Arduino with the computer you should be able to communicate with the PLC SIM but again you have to use the PLC SIM advance and with PLC SIM advance you can only use CPU 1500 you can't use 1200 so be aware of that alright thanks for watching and see you next time